যে আমার নাম ডাক্তার অমল পাল আমি রাজশাহী মেডিকেল থেকে পাস করে এখন ইউকে তে কাজ করি জেনারেল প্র্যাকটিশনার বাট বেসিক্যালি আই এম এ ট্রেন অফ স্টেডিশন এন্ড গাইনোকোলজিস্ট আর এখানে আমার কাজের একটা বড় অংশ হলো এখানকার যে এনএইচএস এনএইচএস এর পলিসি মেকিং আর গত দুই তিন বছর থেকে আমি কাজ করছি প্যান্ডেমিক এর উপর এনিওয়ে তো আজকে যে জিনিসটা আমরা বলবো বাট হোয়াট উই আর ট্রাইং টু ডিসকাস টুডে দিস ইরেকটাল ডিসফাংশন এন্ড প্রিম্যাচুর ইজাকুলেশন দিস ইজ এ হিউজ সাবজেক্ট ইন ফ্যাক্ট এন্ড ওয়ান অফ দ্য ইরেকটাল ডিসফাংশন মে টেক ওয়ান অর টু আওয়ার্স টু ডিসকাস ইফ ইউ গো ইন ডিটেইলস বাট হোয়াট আই হ্যাভ ডান আমি জাস্ট কিছু দ্য বেসিক ফ্যাক্টস আই হ্যাভ জাস্ট দ্যাট হুইচ আই থট অ্যাজ এ জিপি অ্যাজ এ জেনারেল প্র্যাকটিস উই নিড টু নো উই ডোন্ট নিড টু নো অল দ্য ডিটেইলস অফ প্যাথোফিজিওলজি এন্ড আদার্স so please let me know if you think i have uh omitted something or in future somebody or some students will get benefit out of it apna their feedback will be very important so let me start with erectile dysfunction musrat please next slide please Right. Okay. So erectile dysfunction, just let you know so what we are really going to do or what our aim to learn today. If I say a few things, it's one of the things you need to learn. What is the cause of erectile dysfunction? And in the general practice, it's a, one of the commonest complaints you can have from a male uh, patient, especially in the middle age or early middle age people they have these things second thing i will talk about something prescribing the phospho diesterase 5 inhibitors jeta sadharan to amra boli viagra which is commonly named as viagra and what else you can do what else you can do to help with the patient with the erectile dysfunction next slide please now what is the erectile dysfunction if i draw your attention the two points it erectile dysfunction is defined as the persistent inability to attain and maintain an erection sufficient to permit satisfactory sexual performance you may know this two what is important is persistent it's not the one day or uh, one once in a month but if it happens almost every day or almost every time they have to go for sexual uh, intercourse or sexual uh, performance they feel that they cannot make either attain an erection or they have attained the erection but they cannot sustain it to have a normal satisfactory sexual performance this is the basic things you need to i need to tell you about erectile dysfunction so it has to be a persistent inability either in attaining erection or to sustain it enough to have a sexual performance next slide please now this is not a new one i think if you go 200 2000 bc before christ or jo are born it was known to people so 2000 bachhor ageo dekha geche the that people suffer from sexual dysfunction erectile dysfunction mainly and again they they knew that it is the inability to perform a sexual performance and hippocrates ascribed it to as a excessive horseback riding so what hippocrates thought the people who rides horse because they have continuous trauma to the penis underneath the penis so they develop some form of inability to have uh, erectile dysfunction and aristotle thought in the penis there are three nerves who maintain the uh, normal penile function and the air enters into the penis and that gives the erection this was the thoughts 2000 bc but we have changed now we know the different things and we are coming to that next slide please here you go in 
years BC and nearly 2000 years after Christ, so 4,000 years, we know that the erectile dysfunction exists in the society and still there. Yeah. Next slide, please. So one thing I can draw, draw your attention, that please don't think erectile dysfunction is a disease itself. It is not a disease. It is a symptom. It is a symptom of a disease or may not be a disease, maybe a some emotional thing. So please don't treat erectile dysfunction as a disease itself. Treat it as a symptom. Next slide, please. Now, why a people can have erectile dysfunction? What are the causes? We usually think two, one is either organic or psychogenic. Organic means they have some form of medical problem, like diabetes, like old age, old age related problem, or they take some medicine. And another is psychogenic. This performance, sexual performance, is related to psychosexual stimulation. And then if there is some dysfunction of that stimulation, that can result in erectile dysfunction. However, it can be mixture of both. Like in old age, you have age-related problem, you have medical problem that at the same time, your body on tired, your mind is tired as well. So there is a mixture of both organic and psychogenic. That is why some people, they don't say organic, they say primary organic or primary psychogenic or mixture. But whatever you say, you don't have to remember all these things. Just it is a bit theory. So either it has, it has some etiology in your body or in the mind. Next step, please. Next slide, please, Nusrat. Thank you. Now, how uh, erection can happen is just a schematic diagram. So either you have some form of stimulation from visual, that is a sexually uh, exciting anything, or a story, then your body is prepared. You have erectile, all the hormones from the brain, it goes different parts of the body, especially it goes to your heart, starts pumping more blood, and it goes to the penis. In the penis, it has two factors that happens. One is there's inhibition of sympathetic nerve to the penis, which, and there is a parasympathetic input. So sympathetic input is reduced and parasympathetic input is increased. So there is vasodilation. And when there is a vasodilatation, the blood enters that. Blood enters the penis and there is some compression on the vein. That is so whole penis is full of blood and you get the erection. And when you have the erectile process going on, there is some secretion from the urethral mucosa, which moisturizes the whole urethra and it works as a lubrication when people have sexual performance. Next slide, please. So if we can remember the, the last slide, that is either you have a stimulation and your body reacts to that. And if there is a dysfunction, either the stimulation, that is the symptoms or the nervous stimuli from the brain, it doesn't go to your body, other parts of the body, or you are not emotionally stable, or you are not feeling sexually aroused, then you have problem with erection. So you can see if there is a lack of intimacy, it gives inadequate inadequacy, distrust, unloving, unloved situation, then you have erectile dysfunction, that is your reaction is not as it should be. When you have 
problem with the erection, it gives you anxiety. And then you try to avoid sexual performance. And then it gets back to the same point again. You start again that you are not capable of doing a sexual performance. So there is erectile dysfunction. So it is a vicious cycle. Once it starts with inadequate stimulation, then lack of erection, then it goes to frustration, depression, and it, the cycle goes on. And you need to break the cycle to get back to normal erectile function. Next slide, please. Now, I have a couple of slides. This is just to say, what are the underlying causes of this dysfunction? So please don't take, take to any note of this. Uh, the slide will be shared with you. So you will have all these uh, facts where at your laser you can have a look. But just to say this, the causes are, it could be vascular. But if I again go back to my slide and say that uh, the penis is getting full of blood and you have erection. So if there is a vascular problem, the blood may not flow to the penis as it should be. And then you might have the erection problem. So what are the problem you can have basically to reduce blood flow, not from the penis, on the other parts of the body? like cardiovascular disease, hypertension, diabetes, smoking. Sometimes after major pelvic surgery, like prostatectomy. And of course, sometimes, unfortunately, if you have cancer or if any patient have cancer and they have radiotherapy. That all gives the reduced blood supply to the penis and the area. And that can cause the erectile dysfunction. Next slide, please. Then neurological. The, the theory is same. When there is not enough nervous stimulation from the higher center to the penis, the reduced sympathetic stimulation and increased parasympathetic stimulation may not happen as it should happen. And that can give the problem with erectile dysfunction. Like if you have multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, uh, other cerebral problem, you can have this problem of dysfunction in erection. Hormonal is pituitary gland, hypogonadism. I know you know that, I, I'm sure you know the hypogonadism that is dysfunction of the testes or dysfunction of the adrenal gland where the gonotrophic hormones or the testosterone or the GnRH hormones are not coming. Thyroid is another problem, thyroid dysfunction, especially if there is hyperthyroidism. And some people, they suffer from multiple endocrine disorders, which unfortunately, and they end up with inadequate stimulation. That inadequate stimulation may not be directly from the hormone itself, but it could be the side effects or the lateral effects of these hormonal things. Like if you have hypothyroidism, you might have obesity, you may have depression, you may not feel well for yourself. That perpetuated this erectile problems. Next slide, please. Now, this is a rare cause, but you must exclude these things. It's called genital abnormalities genital anatomical abnormalities. This, 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 this thing we need to emphasize that each and every patient who comes to you with erectile dysfunction, please spend one minute to examine the penis. In my own practice, I have seen many patients. They have either hypospadiasis, which never been, he went to a doctor before. They have problems when they have circumcision, the pain there, they don't say. So when there is pain, erection is a problem, then they try to avoid erection, then this problem comes back. Epispadiasis, phimosis is another problem. Phimosis is really is not very uncommon, especially in the mid and early elderly group people. I think it is not diagnosed as it should be because they 
patients don't come all the time with the problem with the microphimosis. Uh, and there's some disease, the Pyronis disease, which is a fibrosis of the penile tissue. So yeah, when there is erection, there's the pain. So they may not have, again, they try to avoid it. Other men have penis problem like uh, penile cancer, prostate cancer, they can again give the problem with erectum, erection problem. But what I'm trying to tell you, please and please examine the patient, both, both testis to exclude hypogonadism or testicular problem, including testicular cancer, and also examine the penis, especially the prepuce. And when you do that, please don't ignore or forget to feel the inguinal lymph nodes. You'll be surprised in your lifetime, you might have one or two patients who came for erectile dysfunction and you suddenly felt inguinal uh, enlarged lymph nodes, which could be due to prostate cancer, which could be due to uh, testicular cancer, maybe early penile cancer. So if you have an opportunity, do the test, do the examination in full, not in isolation. Hello? Sir, please continue. Oh, sorry. No, just, uh, okay. And then, is the next slide, it's not sure, that one. No, go back, please. I guess like that again, psychogenic person. Ah, that's it. The airport, please, not sure. Thank you, thanks. Now, this is one of the most important cause of erectile dysfunction. If I tell you one thing, that is a good number of patients who come with the erection problem, they may not have any other organic cause, maybe psychogenic cause. That is disorder of sexual intimacy and reduced arousability. These two goes side by side. The people who have reduced arousability it may be they have depression, they have anxiety, they have stress. And when there is a combination, have combination of them, they think too much, they spend sleepless night, and then they don't feel to have sexual relationship. Even they want to have sexual relationship, they don't want to have that intimacy that is going to the end of the process that is sexual intercourse. This is one of the important cause of erectile dysfunction. Sometimes you, you, you may have very maybe 25, 20, 30 years old man who got recently married, went for honeymoon, came back after two, three weeks and get depressed because during honeymoon, they couldn't perform sexual performance. And, they, and then he feels that he is not adequate enough to satisfy the partner. And this is a vicious cycle starts when there may not be any problem. There may be the psychological issues there. Another issue is marital disharmony. This is one of the important issue. If you have got, we say, many of you know that Princess Diana told that there are too many people in my marriage. That is when a married man have a relationship outside the marriage, marital relationship, they could start the problem. They have guilty feeling, they have problem with not telling the truth, and they hide something, and that gives a cycle of anxiety, stress, and that it gives eventually the reduced sexual performance. And not to mention the psychiatric problem, including schizophrenia. The schizophrenia may not be itself, the, basic cause of erectile dysfunction, but the medication they take for this uh, treatment, they might have the side effects. I'm coming to that one. 
And I have highlighted one thing is is old is in red. You have to excuse me uh, because it is very sexist remark. Old age should not be taken as the cause of erectile dysfunction, but unfortunately it may. There are many good people, good healthy people in old age, usually we say after 70, and they're quite capable to have a normal sexual life. But there's a significant number of them, they may not. And they might have lots of medical problem, which they're physically unwell. They have lots of children at home, so they may not have chance to meet the wife as they should. They have so many other interests or commitments to so go away. So this all comes together in old age. And although old age should not be a factor for sexual performance, but it could be. So although I put it in red, please don't think it is the red mark of your life is not. It is just to remember that uh, at old age, erectile dysfunction could be one of the uh, factor which for which the patient is coming to see you. Next slide, please. Now, I just listed some medicine which can have side effects with erectile dysfunction. When you have a patient with erectile dysfunction, please and please take detailed history, including the medication history. I personally, I can tell you my experience, one of our patients, I know him very well for the last 10 years. He was in a perfectly in good health. Recently, he was diagnosed with hypertension and he had uh, medication for that. And after a couple of months, he came to see me and told me, look, I'm having performance problem in bed. I, I'm not as good as I was. And it is creating problem in my medical life. He saw some other doctors, but, and he was looking for some Viagra. I took the history and I somehow or other, I don't know, I could be a bit lucky to note that one of the medicine he was taking, it had one of the side effects could be erectile dysfunction. I stopped the medicine. I prescribed alternate one. Within three, four weeks, he was perfectly well. So. This is one of the things, this is what we call it. Uh, uh, you can just exclude one thing from the medication and you can give them a normal life. However, if that medicine is only medicine he or she has to, he has to take, then it's a completely different issue. So medical history, medication history should be taken in full. Next slide, please. So I, I'm, I'm coming back to what I was talking to you. The three things we know from the medical student life from whenever we are in third year, fourth year, especially in the fifth year, our teacher always taught us, take history, do examination, and then you go for investigation. But problem happened now in, in 2020, 2010, we have gone back to the other way. We take history for two minutes, send investigation 20, and examination the last thing in our list. Recently, it's a very sad news, but sad, not news, it's a story, but I'm sharing with you. One of, I know patient contacted me. She's 20, no, 34, 32, 34. She went to a gynecologist with abnormal vaginal bleeding and she was prescribed with oral pill and progesterone only pill. And after, I think a month, sorry, a year, he was diagnosed with invasive cervical cancer. And the paper was sent to me just to review that's what else we can do. That's That time I just spoken to her and say, did they examine you? Did the put a speculum to have a look into the cervix? And she said, no. So could you please remember, 
our basic teaching from our great teachers, medical teachers who taught us that take proper history, do detailed examination, and then you go for investigation. Examination means physical examination, genetic examination, whatever is indicated. I remember in my, my final uh, fifth year uh, examination, our professor was Professor Kaiser Raman Choudhury. He was telling us, if you don't do PR on a male patient with abdominal symptom, the examiner will kick from you from the back. So I will not, never forget this teaching from my teacher. So I would last like to remind you, please and please remember your teachers and do the basic things. Next slide, please. As I said this, what we do, what investment should we do for erectile dysfunction? We took the history, we took the history of onset, history of how it happened, any physical problem, any psychological problem, medication, blood pressure, whatever. Then the second thing come, our pet area, very, we are very fond of it, do the investigation. Before going for investigation, please and please check the vital signs, like check blood pressure, check pulse, check weight. Now then go for, if you think, he needs some blood test, you go for that. But this blood test, if the erectile problem is long term, I would suggest that you should do check for the diabetes, full blood count, thyroid function test, testosterone, follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, and prolactin, if it is indicated. Do the screening for cardiovascular disease. This is a, this is mandatory. Because if a patient has cardiovascular disease, they may have peripheral vascular disease before it's coming from the central vascular disease. When I say peripheral vascular disease, that means it have the lack of blood supply or reduced blood supply on the leg, hand, or in the penile area. That can be treated. But if you ignore that, if you forget that, or if you miss it, that can affect the central vascular system, including heart, cardiovascular system and cerebrovascular system. So you might have missed, a, missed an opportunity to find out a problem which could be life-saving during they have a consultation for erectile dysfunction. Another thing you know that I put in red is PSA. This PSA you must do for any patient present to you with erectile dysfunction because prostate cancer and prostate problem, the first thing could happen that PSA will go up. In, in the Western world, the GPs are, they will be negligent if they don't do PSA with the patient who comes with erectile dysfunction. It will be clinical negligent. I'm telling you because I just want to emphasize that if you have an opportunity to have a consultation with a patient with erectile dysfunction, please and please do PSA. You might find out some patient with early prostate cancer who never been could never been to you if he didn't have the erectile dysfunction. Next slide, please. Now, what the treatment? As I said, the treatment. For the beginning, I said this is one of the causes is psychosomatic. So if it is psychological cause, you first thing you need counseling. You need to give them information. So the first thing, as a doctor, as a GP, you talk to them. Jishan Hajipur. Hello. Microphone to mute Korean. Thank you. So can I go back, uh, Nusrat, please? <clears throat> yeah, this one. So this is this is the first thing you do. Don't jump to the medication, please. Don't jump to any conclusion, any medicine, anything. First, give counseling and information. Do the examination. Do the blood test if you need. And 
of course you need to do uh, the uh, PSA and don't forget to perform a parietal examination to feel the prostate. So this is the first. The second thing is available to treat is a medicine which is Viagra. It's better to say PDE5 uh, because if I say Viagra, it may sound as I am uh, encouraging you to use the Viagra. Please don't think for a second for that. I'm just telling you because Viagra is well known. That's why. The first thing, first medication will be Viagra or other PDE5 inhibitors. And then goes the vacuum erection device, interurethral suppositories, penile implant, and self in injection to the penis. The last four, it is not within the capacity of a general practitioner. And please, uh, I would suggest that if medication is not working, you should refer to the urologist for the consideration of the other four I wrote here. It is just for your information. Next slide, please. Now, as I said, the PDE5 is uh, usually we call it a Viagra because it's the first thing, the first medicine came uh, with PDE5 uh, pharmaceutical uh, thing. That's what they call it Viagra. How does it work? It, it works with an enzyme inhibiting an enzyme, which is called cyclic GMP in the penis. And that inhibition of the breakdown of the enzyme increases the blood flow of the penis. And that helps with erection and sexual performance. So please remember that PDE5 inhibitors for erectile dysfunction, not premature ejaculation, which I'm going to talk a, a few minutes after. Next slide, please. As I say, the another name is sildenafil citrate. That's the same, the PDE5 inhibitor. Next slide, please. Now, why the PDE5 inhibitors, how you can use and what you should do when you prescribe the first thing is you assess the patient. One thing you should remember, the PDE5 inhibitors, they're potentially dangerous if you don't prescribe judicially. If a patient have heart problem, angina, unstable angina, using nitrite suppositories or spray, you must not give that Viagra. This is again a clinical negligent in the Western countries. In Bangladesh, I don't know where, how it uh, works, but it must not be prescribed. It has got potential effect to help with erection, but again, it has a potential side effects. One of the side, one of the risks, I don't say side effects, the risk is prolonged erection, and also the priapism. So if the erection getting painful and lasts for more than four minutes, but remember it has to be painful. If erection lasts for more than four minutes, but it's not painful, that's okay. But if it is more than five, six minutes and it's painful, the patient gets uh, unease or they're complaining of severe pain in the penis, which is called priapism. It is usually a blood clot inside the penile blood vessels. And that's why you have to be careful when you prescribe Viagra to mention that if it does it happen, you need to take medical advice immediately. Next slide, please. Now the side effects with cadbis, I just list them as one of them is cardiovascular, which I told you. That is, you should not give any patient who has a cardiac problem, heart problem, because it may end up with heart attack. It can have effect on the eye, some blurring of vision, hearing. It can cause 
hypotension reduce blood pressure and it may have some other defects like inclusive bleeding but that is not very common the last thing that you should be careful to counsel them that viagra itself is not a reason to have sexual sexually transmitted disease but because the viagra give the ability to have a enhanced performance a number of people can use it to have sexual relationship outside medical life so that would give the risk of sexually transmitted disease although viagra is not itself uh, responsible for the stds but use of it may increase the risk of the other people so please counsel them that if you go outside to normal sexual life you might have a chance to have sexually transmitted disease next slide please so just i'm showing you quickly how it is this is called penile vacuum uh, device is uh, like a tube it goes inside the penis and there is a suction so when uh, the it, the suction starts the penis is getting full of blood and then you have erection then they put a band on the band at the base of the penis so blood cannot go back to normal circulation so there is a erection there but it could be very painful there will be engorgement in the penis and it could the sexual performance may not be as happy as it should have next slide please this is again uh, called intraurethral suppositories there is a, a medicine called aprodacil uh, the small tube you put inside the urethra squeeze the tube and goes there because it is a vasodilator it increases the blood supply in the penis and then uh, the, the, the patient they can have the erection and sexual performance again it can have side effects it may not work it may be boring sometimes painful next slide please this is next slide please this is a, a again a we call that's okay rest of that's fine uh, this is a injection again the same aprodacil injection some people they inject themselves in the penis and wait for a couple of minutes they, there's a vasodilatation and then they have erectile uh, function but again it could be painful because of the injection you are physically injecting so you could feel pain and may not be a best thing to have before having a, a sexual intercourse next thing please so whatever we told you, whatever i told you you can forget everything but i will if you give you three things to learn today one is if you have a patient with sexual uh, erectile dysfunction please consider the rare possibility of prostate cancer and perform a blood for psa test when you treat a patient with sexual problem erectile dysfunction with viagra or pde5 it must be used with caution it should not be a recreational medicine as a gp you have the responsibility to prescribe pde5 with a with a clinical judgment and the last thing but most important if any doubt please refer the patient to urologist if you are not sure what is happening send the patient for the best treatment with the urologist next slide please now i'll go quickly with the premature uh, ejaculation uh, next slide please so what is premature ejaculation this is a very arbitrary term premature ejaculation they say when ejaculation takes place before the man or his partner feels that the performance was enough 
and they are happy. And there is no time limit for that. Usually they say in between, if it is less than one minute from the sexual uh, intercourse start and the ejaculation, they say it is premature. But many, many couples, they complain that they have sexual intercourse for two, three minutes and their ejaculation, they're not happy. And on the other hand, there are people who have five, seven minutes of intercourse and they have ejaculation and they're not happy. So it is completely is arbitrary. It depends on the couple who are complaining to you. Unfortunately, this is a very common problem. It's, it's a one in three men, but I would say in Bangladesh, maybe 40 to 50% of people, they may have uh, premature ejaculation. Next one, please. What I told you, this is just uh, next slide, please. So this is the frustration of not being able to perform the act to satisfy both partners. Next slide, please. So how premature ejaculation can affect a couple. There's a decreased confidence in relationship. The, either the couple may think the other one is not happy with me, so uh, the sexual relationship is not as it should be. There could be mental distress, anxiety, depression, and not to mention embarrassment. Especially it is very difficult when it happens in early part of their married life or early part of their life, like in 30s, in 20s, late 20s. I have seen many, many people. When I was uh, working as a gynecologist, I have a number of women coming with their partners with a uh, complaint of premature ejaculation. So it is common, but fortunately, it's good news that a few things are very organic, very dangerous. Most of them is uh, amenable. Next slide, please. Right. What are the causes of premature ejaculation? Let's go through. Next slide, please. Again, I say what I start from the beginning, the psychological. Most of the causes are psychological, but the psychological cause, there is some background. Maybe some people, they have early sexual experiences, like some boys, they have sexual relation at the age of 13, 14, 12, 15 uh, in their later life, because when they started their first sexual uh, performance, they could not do good because of their age. When they get married at the age of 25, 30, they have the experience of the early sexual early sexual performance or lack of performance, they feel that they will not be able to do the uh, sexual activities as they should. And they starts having premature ejaculation and difficulty with erection. Please, yeah. That is another thing is sexual abuse. No, that, thank you. Sexual abuse. This is one of the things which is in my opinion, is mostly not documented or is taken into account in our country. Sexual abuse of the children is a very damaging mental health problem. And it is coming back to light in this, in the Western world. And the sexual abuse in the children is a high, on the high list to detect in the early stage, the GPs are always told to note the sign and symptoms of sexual levels mainly in the early age, and then not to mention in uh, when the married life. If a woman is sexually abused or a man is sexually abused, they could have the sexual dysfunction. Poor body image is one other thing. The things I'm not capable, I'm not attractive, I have 
either I'm fat or I'm very lean, thin, and not to mention the depression and other anxiety. Another thing is that we call is to rush through sexual intercourse. Some men can happen in their life that they have opportunity to have a sexual intercourse with the women, opportunistic outside the marital life, and they want to complete it as soon as possible. And then they can't do it. They have premature ejaculation. And that goes back to their mind. When they go back to the normal sexual partner, they might have the same feeling. They might have the same premature ejaculation. So one of the cause is bad sexual experience in the past. Next slide, please. There is some biological causes. If there is hormonal abnormalities, uh, abnormal level of neurotransmitters, which affects uh, psychological well-being of a person, uh, and not to mention the infection and inflammation of the prostate and urethra. And some people, they call the inherited traits. I'm not very sure about that, but there is mention that some people can inherit the premature ejaculation problem. Next slide, please. So what are the risk factors? One of them is problem with the erection, anxiety about sex and performance, relationship problem, again, the old age and the partner. If you go back and think of it, what I told, if you just accumulate and build up a picture that a young man of 25 got married, had problem in the past, either sexually abused or have tried to have sexual performance which he couldn't do. He might have erectile dysfunction. Then he thinks that he's not capable to perform the act, perform the sexual relationship with the wife. And they eventually they end up with premature ejaculation. Old age is one of the cause, but it's nothing to worry. And the partner, when the partner is not attractive to you or you have, don't have a good relationship, you have problem with erection. And if you have erection, you have uh, premature ejaculation. So this is all premature ejaculation and erectile dysfunction could be a interrelated factor. It could be a compound relationship problem. Next slide, please. So how we can diagnose? Diagnosis is the history. Premature ejaculation diagnosis is the history, and you may just examine the patient. But the blood test and others, really you need to do if it is indicated from the history itself. Otherwise, it is not worth. The gold standard of premature ejaculation is the history. How it happened, when it happened, how usually happens, is the relationship stable? Are you happy in your family uh, life? Do you have any bad experience in the past? All these things you can take and you come to a conclusion. Next slide, please. Now, how we can do that? How we can help these people? Say psychological therapy, if you have time to counseling or refer to a counselor. Maybe a referral to the uh, sex therapy, sexual therapy. I don't know in Bangladesh there is there or there or not. Or marriage counselor, that's one of the things you can do. Behavioral change, use condoms. Sometimes, as I told you in the beginning, you can remember there is a stimulation in the glands penis, which uh, initiates sometimes the ejaculation. But if you use the condom, so the stimulation of the gland plane is, is reduced. So the, the performance can be enhanced. There is one thing they call Kegel performance or Kegel method. I don't know you use or not, but it is a good thing to, it is simply a lifestyle behavioral changes. You teach the patient how to do that, to contract the pelvic muscles three, four times at a time, and maybe 10, 15 times a day. They can do any time and you can teach them how to do it or 
there's a lots of YouTube video, how to do the Kegel. You can refer to them, they can do it. It's really good. It does not uh, involve any medication. It gives the confidence because they're doing themselves and they're, it is in uh, one form of encouragement to engage themselves into their solving in their own problem. The medicines are SSRIs, uh, PDF inhibitors. Sometimes the people, they use local anesthetics on the gland plane, so it is not as uh, sensitive as it should be. But again, you should use it with caution. And if you want to go that line, I will suggest you refer to the urologist. And also you can combine, combine all these methods, psychological therapy, counseling, behavioral and medicine. Next slide, please. Now, as I said, the premature ejaculation is a very common problem. Though, so there's a lots of research going on especially the uh, psychosexual medical speci uh, specialist. They use lots of medicine they are suggesting, but as a GP, I would not prescribe any of them. And I will urge caution for you not to prescribe them, just to refer them if you think they will help, except SSRI, that is antidepressant medicine. If there is a history of depression or anxiety, you can try uh, with dapoxetin, but again, this is uh, not, I would suggest that you should do it. You should refer to the specialist. Next slide, please. As I say, this is what we learn. If we say nothing you learn, you just learn, please. This premature ejaculation is not a disease. It is a very subjective one. Do not prejudice, do not feel that that man who is in front of me, a patient, is an incapable man. Uh, don't have a preconception. If you have a preconception as a GP, it will ruin the relationship with the patient and help with the premature ejaculation. The management should be information, explanation, and reassurance, counseling through the marriage and sexual counseling service. And last thing, but most important thing, if you are in doubt, refer to the urologist. Next slide, please. Here you go. This is we are aiming for a normal sexual life for a healthy couple. Next slide, please. Oh, sorry, there's two pictures is now. Anyway. This is a picture which is not here anyway. And then thank you. Uh, 